Hello, it's Natalie here with, with some more Travel Talk. And today we have the lovely Sarah from the Scenic Group. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, Nat. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to see you. Great to join you on your Travel Talk today. Yeah, lovely to see you. We haven't seen you for some time. We hope you can come to the store soon. But in the meantime, can you tell us a little bit about what's been happening in the scenic world and where the scenic vessels are and what the staff are doing during this um, time of COVID? Yes, Nat, we've been quite busy, I guess, in this downtime doing lots of different projects that, um, you know, tend to be put on the back burner usually when we're in the hustle and bustle of our daily lives. The Australian team here at Scenic, uh, we've been busy doing a lot of webinars. We've been recording some great webinar series that are featuring on our website at the moment. So if you're wanting some inspiration, you can join the pre-recorded webinars and watch those. Uh, talking mostly about our wonderful European river cruises and especially the ones that we've had the pleasure of doing ourselves. Um, secondly, I guess, because we are a, um, an international company now as well, we have been very busy building lots of ships. So the great news is that uh, our Croatian shipyard, which we now own, we are very busy and working on the build of Scenic Eclipse number two. And also we can promise you that we are delivering another four custom built vessels to be coming into the Scenic Group within the next six years. So lots of great plans in the future and lots of shipbuilding. Um, and secondly too, the second part of our business which is the Emerald Cruising brand. That's our four-star deluxe range. We are excited because we've had two ships um, being built in this time frame. The first is the Emerald Luna, and that is going to be cruising on the Rhine, Maine, and the Danube. She'll be joining the rivers as of 2021. And also quite exciting, we have launched the Emerald Azura, and this is going to be our first uh, of the um, small yachts range and only 100 passengers on board. So that's also an exciting project. So we have been quite busy. Wow, I know Abby did the Emerald in uh, European River Cruise some years ago and she absolutely loved it. So um, that's fantastic. And everybody's really intrigued about the Eclipse. I think it's, is it one year old at the moment? Is it your anniversary? Yes, it is actually been one year. Can you believe it that? So we had our maiden voyage just a year ago. Um, we've got some um, great little videos actually that we've been sharing via our social media um, celebrating this one year anniversary, which has certainly gone really, really fast. So currently the Eclipse is sitting in Port Vallarta and we have suspended our Eclipse cruises up until 31 October currently. So we are obviously, like everybody, waiting to see what the future brings. But I know that uh, we have a lot of guests anticipating and eager to be joining their Eclipse cruises as soon as possible. And um, of course, as I said, Eclipse number two is being built at the moment. So that will also be very exciting to see what itineraries we can bring moving forward. Some new and exciting destinations on the cards, I think. Yeah, well, I, I'd say that... That's what most of my clients have been talking about with their scenic credits and, and to, looking towards the future is, is using it towards going on the wonderful eclipse. So now or soon they're going to have two to choose from. So that's fantastic news. Um, and obviously everyone's getting excited to travel again. I know I am. <laughs> it's been too long. Um, but wondering, like, I know that there's, they're, talk, they're talking about what possibly they can, can be done in the future to move forward. But is scenic doing anything specific that you know of that they're going to be doing differently um, because of COVID? Yeah, it's a good question, Nat. I think a lot of things need to change in the future that a lot of cruise lines and coach touring companies will need to adhere to. And we're certainly working very closely with CLIA, which is the Cruise Line International Association. The protocols that they will set will be exactly the ones that we're going to adhere to. And we do have a little bit of that listed on our website at the moment when it comes to river cruising and ocean cruising. But certainly a lot of these are still developing. So we will certainly be um, following these procedures once we do resume. When we're talking about our coach touring, I guess the biggest thing to point out at the moment is we have reduced our passenger number size down to 24 passengers only on a coach tour, which is really wonderful because we generally use the 50-seater coaches. We're still keeping those only 
Um, but that means 24 people on these 50 seater coaches. So there'll be quite a lot of space to social distance. And of course, adhering to the safety requirements and health requirements that we now need to follow moving forward. So yeah, there are some upsides to moving forward during this COVID period. And we look forward to resuming with these protocols in place. Yes, because um, Sandy don't just do cruising, um, you do the coach sharing, as you said. So maybe you could just elaborate on, on what brands and products you do have. Yeah, that's a really good question as well, Nat, because I think when we think of Scenic Group, um, we automatically go to the wonderful river cruising and now the Eclipse. But in actual fact, the heart of our company, where the humble beginnings was, was 33 years ago in Australia, and we are a coach tour company at heart. So we have always had our wonderful Australia coach tours, and we still do. So now that I think people are looking for something a little closer to home, you can still, still tour with Scenic, uh, through our coach touring program of all of Australia and also New Zealand. We do the North and the South Island and we also do a wonderful eight day escorted tour to Norfolk Island. So there are some really great choices uh, that you can still do for that shorter closer to home itinerary for the moment and uh, certainly 24 passengers now as per the group size that I mentioned. Well, I did a scenic New Zealand a long time ago and I absolutely loved it and I know Abby in our office is lucky enough as well to Canada and she enjoyed that uh, immensely so yeah we've got to remind everybody that you don't just have to cruise these days you can do coach touring and um, are you finding people are booking us closer to home Australia Tasmania uh, and things like that yeah look we're getting a little bit of a mix really because I think that with ocean cruising especially with scenic eclipse and even the new yacht the Emerald Azura she'll be in the waters as of July next year doing beautiful Mediterranean cruising so normally with ocean cruising um, I'm sure your viewers would be aware that you generally need to book a little bit in advance and being smaller vessels uh, availability can be an issue so we're still seeing bookings coming in for 2021 and 2022 for ocean cruising. And then with river cruising, we've just opened our 2022 sailings. So those people that would like to book or get in early certainly can do. And of course, with about 140 guests per ship. So we're still seeing a trend of people booking for that one to two years in advance. Plus also, People who are using their future travel credits at the moment are taking advantage of slipping in an, an Australian tour or a small local tour in the meantime, and then they're planning that big trip in the future. Yeah, we, we, we are doing future bookings and um, we have certainly got inquiries. Um, so then the hot topic is the eclipse and um, I'm sure it's going to be more and more, um, there'll be more and more interesting closer to home once we know that we can leave um, the state or the country. Um, so, also, um, you, you mentioned what is a little bit popular, but what's the most popular cruise right now? Look, I'm seeing a little bit of a trend with Eclipse again. I'll say Antarctica and the Arctic. Once again, I think this is probably because those two regions um, tend to be a shorter cruising period. So, for example, Antarctica, you can only really travel from that October time frame through to February, usually. So it's a shorter season. And same with the Arctic. So we are finding people are booking the eclipse. For those particular regions, they're still booking in advance because you really need to be doing that. And there will be some people that only want to do close to home. Just um, you have anything like an itinerary that you know of that's going to be around soon or early next year or whatever that is going to be close to home or a coach tour that might inspire people to come travel closer to home. Anything yeah, ab absolutely. It's a good time to be looking at the closer to home as well at the moment. Our Australia touring brochure is already out at the moment, but we're about to bring the new brochure out early September. And rumour has it there will be some new itineraries in there. So keep an eye out for that because that's just a couple of weeks away. Um, and we've, we've definitely been listening to feedback from guests and developing new ideas for the land touring. And rumour has it, I know that you're going to ask me this question about the eclipse coming to Australia in the future. And I can't promise you anything just yet, but rumour has it that with the four ships we have coming in the next six years, certainly that one of those hopefully will be based here in Australia. So that is really, really good news and we can only hope. But, um, you know, moving forward, keeping fingers crossed. 
definitely what people are asking. Um, now, I can tell you what my favourite cruise was. That was on the um, only last year um, on the Mekong. I was on the Scenic Spirit and something I didn't think I wanted to do, but I absolutely loved. Um, so can highly recommend that. So where is your, um, or what is your favourite scenic cruise? Look, I really am spoiled for choice because I have been on board a few times and I've loved everything. Um, but I must say that I'm going to give you this answer based on the atmosphere and what I loved about Europe, which is different to what we experience in Australia. I was lucky enough to be on board the Christmas time cruise last December, cruising on the beautiful scenic Opal from Amsterdam to Budapest. And on this cruise, it was the last cruise of the season. We enjoyed Christmas Day and New Year's on board. And I just think that the atmosphere and the ambience of being in Europe over this magical time of Christmas is just something so different. And we don't, I mean, here in Australia, we're lucky we've got beautiful weather at that time, but we're really not used to having those Christmas markets going in and buying the local souvenirs, mm -hmm. the wine, trying all of the local you know, special um, treats that are made in the markets. And, you know, it really, it just has a charm to it and something that I think, you know, in my mind forever, a memory of a lifetime. Um, so I'd have to say that the Christmas markets, well, the Christmas Wonderland cruise, which is the one I was on, was certainly mine so far. That sounds divine. And I did see your photos and it was very, very romantic. Yes. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I know where I want to cruise next to, and that is anything on the eclipse anywhere. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what country or anything, um, just want to be on that eclipse. Um, but where are you wanting to cruise to next? I can see you cruising on that eclipse now, <laughs> definitely. Um, look, for me, I think maybe a European summer is on the cards, and I really would love to experience the Douro Valley, so Portugal. We do a beautiful 11 day cruise right through the Douro. Um, I like the fact that it's just focusing on Portugal. So you've got one country, but you can really immerse yourself in that Mediterranean feel, have some port wine, really get involved with the local culture. And our vessel is quite small and intimate as well. So it's going to be a beautiful experience. So yeah, I think that's probably the next one, Nat. I know that's quite popular, so you do have to get in early to book that. Yeah, that's really and nice. I think that's going to be what's going to happen in the future. All these small vessels are going to get it booked out very quickly. So anyone that's thinking about going should probably start talking to us now to even just register their interest is what I think. I think that's always a really good plan because um, certainly Scenic is moving with the times and of course accommodating passengers that are affected by COVID suspensions or delays. So certainly to hold your cabin and lock in your space and then we'll continue to work with you, Nat, the travel agent, to make sure the guests are happy and make changes to bookings should we need to in the future. Um, but I think that's a really good outcome and uh, some good advice to, to get in early to avoid disappointment. And I would say that um, both uh, from an industry perspective and also from the client's perspective that Scenic handled the whole COVID situation very well. So thank you. And uh, also thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me and look forward to seeing you all soon. And bon voyage, everybody. Happy planning. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.